Thank you for joining me here today here at uh, St. Paul Lutheran Church in Parkersburg, West Virginia. I'm Pastor Daniel Golden, and this week's devotion is uh, from the second Sunday after Epiphany. We're in Epiphany season for about one month here, and the epistle appointed for this week is from Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 16. But first, just the first verse, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, then in proportion to our faith. It all has to start somewhere. These gifts that we have, the work that we do, the time that we give, the talents that we have, and the treasures that we share. But it all started with time, talents, and treasures given to us from grace through faith, on account of solely the works of Jesus Christ. The epiphany, this revelation for us this week, is that this grace is abundant. There's more of it than we can ever handle. So each one has their own special gifts, according to the riches of his indescribable grace. And when I think of these gifts, I think of, you know, when we're at work or when we're at school, When a certain time of year rolls around, or even a certain month rolls around, or a certain semester, we get a report. And that report tells us what we're good at and what we're not so good at. And for school, it gets quantified. You can get an A, or you can get all the way down to an F, or even an incomplete. But at work, we all know very well that we also have an annual evaluation where we are told our strengths and our areas for opportunity. And more often than not, we're instructed by our supervisors over us that we need to work on our opportunities or our areas for improvement. And those are tough because many times that's not the gift that has been given to us. It's not a natural talent that we may have. But to be sure, we have strengths. And that's what Paul's talking about today. Paul is telling us, for those who concentrate on those strengths, a little bit of how to do it. And here are the following verses. If it's service, then in our servicing. To the one who teaches, in his teaching. The one who exhorts, in his exhortation. The one who contributes in generosity. The one who leads with zeal. The one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. We should do these things genuinely in these ways. And that brings us to the next verse. And this is our epiphany and our revelation for this week. Let love be genuine. Love is how we serve others with with our serving and our teaching and our exhortation. Love is how we contribute in, in generosity. Love is how we lead with zeal. We all know of times that we've been fake in our past where we try to put on a good show, put on a good face, put on a smile, or try to cover up an area of opportunity even, but... We fall short. But in the Christian faith and spirituality, and in real life amongst us all here in the church, let love be genuine. Let it be real. Let it be the truth. Let it be like the love that was given to us in the grace of Jesus Christ. Paul continues, Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, but be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. This is, as Paul says, living in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. 
Never be wise in your own sight. You know, in being a Christian, when we make these mistakes, when our love isn't so genuine, it's, it's when we talk the talk, but aren't that great at walking the walk? Our, our words don't match our deeds. And this is natural. This is part of our original, our original sin, our old Adam in us that wants to just take care of ourselves. We've got all this wonderful grace. Why give it away? But we have these gifts in abundance so that we cannot possibly hold on to all of it ourselves. Those of us who may be good at teaching, we teach. Those who lead should do it with zeal. Those who uh, do acts of mercy should do it with cheerfulness, not with any glumness and not being slothful, but we need to be patient, contribute to the needs of the saints, and show hospitality. Hospitality that has been given to us in abundance. Hospitality is part of the grace of God. What is God's hospitality? Well, even in the very beginning, he fed us. He made us. He even clothed us when we did wrong. God has been very, very hospitable in abundance since the beginning of creation. And what do we have to show for it? Well, it may seem like all we have to focus on is our areas of opportunity or what we're not so good at. But... That's why we're all united in one body of Christ. To the one who's not apt to teach, there's going to be somebody else in the body of Christ that's apt to teach. To the one who may not be very good at exhortation or even have cheerfulness, there's going to be another who is. Here in the Christian church, we take care of each other. We build each other up. Because we have such abundance in our talents, we have such abundance in the gifts of grace from God on account of Jesus Christ. We can't contain it. Our cup runs over. All because of the cup that first ran over. The cup of wrath from God the Father poured on the punishment to the Son for all of our sins. Punishment that we deserved. Punishment that was more abundant than we could ever imagine. But because the Son of God rose from the dead, defeated sin, death, and the devil, and evil, his grace is abundant. His grace is accessible on account of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In that abundance, your sins are all forgiven. So now what do we do being a Christian? What's your strength? What's your opportunity? We all have opportunities, and no, we shouldn't ignore them, but we have our strengths. How can our strengths serve the one body of Christ? For they are abundant. Should we not share that love as that love has been shared with us on the cross? Of course we should. Of course we should. My friends, let love be genuine. For the love that was genuine and given towards us is shown as the Son of God, Jesus Christ in the flesh, hung on the cross. For there is no greater love for one than one to die for his brother. For this we give thanks, the abundance of grace, and all his great epiphanies for us. Amen.